útra kelnék, hömpölyből sugárban énekelnék. Ó, ha szellő volnék, mindig fújnék, minden bőkabátba belebújnék. Ó, ha csillag volnék, kerek égem, csorogna a földre sárga fényem. Jaj, de honnan vissza sose járnék, Anyám nélkül mindig sírdogálnék. Kindergarten children are responsive to beauty and eager for knowledge. As kindergarten teachers, we are the first to take their hands and help them on the road to culture. We guide their first steps. It depends on us whether or not they learn to walk that road on their own, becoming adults who value music and music making. This film respectfully pays tribute to the great pedagogue who elevated the cause of early childhood music education with her innumerable activities in Hungary and abroad. The depth of her professional knowledge combined with her up-to-date theoretical and methodological readiness and her pedagogical culture have served as a beacon for us for more than half a century. After long decades of world-renowned activity, she has left us an intellectual legacy of immeasurable importance. Her educational principles are still valid and exemplary for today's kindergarten teachers. After graduating at the end of the 1940s, she started working with young children as a disciple of Zoltan Kodai. From 1950, she was also the voice teacher at the Teres Brunswick Kindergarten Teachers Training College in Budapest. Her personal notes show that both her childhood experiences with her family and her meeting with Kodai were defining factors in her career. Encouraged by Kodai, she started special music classes in a kindergarten on Chobans Street in Budapest. She had always wanted to work with little children. I have always been interested in little children. We lived in an apartment building in Debrecen, where the other tenants had many children. They were always naughty, played loudly, and were constantly being reprimanded. I gathered them together and led them to the big forest, where we played and sang and had a good time. The parents were grateful, although it was only perhaps once a week. I grew to love this age group, who were sincere and particularly susceptible. Unfortunately, perhaps too susceptible, as they accepted anything without question. Hungarian and foreign guests were in awe of her successful pedagogical achievements. She worked with kindergarten children for more than 50 years. Innumerable children attended her music kindergarten, and many of them have become music-loving, music-making adults. Amikor paripán ballag, 
oda néz valahány csillag. Amikor paripán táncol, oda néz a nap is százszor. Pucalad a fejkó, kergeti a bence, ne kerges te bence, szelad a kemence. Pucalad a fejkó, kergeti a bence, ne kerges te bence, elszalad a fejkó. The results of her work attracted the attention of international music organizations. In 1964, the participants of the ISME conference could witness Katalin Foray's demonstration class with kindergarten children at the Music Academy. The audience was convinced of the effectiveness of Kodai's principles, joyful common singing, efficient, playful musical tasks, combining theory and practice while developing musical skills. Katalin Foray was fast becoming the ambassador of preschool music education throughout the world. La, 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 la. Supported by her exceptional stamina and enthusiasm, she educated people in several different areas. Her teaching inspired adults and children alike. For decades, the Hungarian radio broadcast a series called Four Preschoolers, led by Katalin. This deservedly popular program encouraged preschoolers to sing and play together. For kindergarten teachers, it was an exemplary model giving ideas about how to compile sequences of songs, games, and musical tasks. We prepared 100 to 110 preschool programs a year. Twelve of these were done with Koti Farai. She gradually built up the three levels of preschool materials, and we broadcast one of them each month. This program was primarily meant for kindergarten teachers. Koti taught them how to help a child who could not sing in tune and how important it was to be patient. It was an exemplary program with stories, poems and singing games. I have always admired how she worked, even after 20 to 30 years how she could build a rapport with the children. When she entered a kindergarten that she had never been to before, she asked the children's name, and that was already enough. The recording rolled. I loved to work with her very much. Respecting one of the most important Kodayan principles, she always placed singing games in the center of music education. She often spoke about this. We singing teachers, well, teachers in general, play an important role in ensuring that children can interact successfully with others and also that they love to play, sing, draw, play with puppets, in other words, that they love the arts. I'm mostly speaking of the little ones. This strengthens social bonds and discipline, to start together, sing together and hit the same pitch. But they can hardly wait to choose a partner, so there is a certain inattention. Games are close to arts because children are role-playing. They act as if they were ducks fluttering their wings. They know they are not ducks, but act as if the same as in a theatre. I know that it is not Henry VIII on the stage. But I also know that the actor is a man too who goes home at night and has supper. 
So in the roles of children's games, where they pretend to be the candle or the nut tree, there is already art, and of course there is music, since these are singing games after all. For decades, she sought to bring music education to daycare centers as well. She helped daycare educators with methodological advice and compilations of songs and rhymes. From the 60s onward, she observed groups of children in the creches of the Children's Hospital Paul Heim and the National Methodological Institute of Creches. She noted the little ones cooing, babbling, and their spontaneous improvisations in games. Then she analyzed them and published her observations. She noted the beneficial effect that a singing adult role model had on the musical and speech development of the little ones. If we accept the concept that the musical hearing of every healthy child can be developed, we should know that this work must be started during the most susceptible age of the child, in the first three years. The pace of development depends on the musical receptiveness and the innate inclinations of the child as well, but conscious development plays a decisive role. Music education at this age does not mean teaching songs by rote, but giving musical stimuli which arouses the musical interest of the children, inspiring them to spontaneous warbling and humming. From Katalin Foray's lecture at the session of the Psychological Society of MTA, May 15, 1975. At advanced in-service courses and singing classes for daycare educators, she taught children's songs, nursery rhymes, and inspirational songs for listening. Bűvöljétek akkor a gyerekeket az áspissal, kérem szépen a kezedet, ráolvasunk, kihúzzuk a betegséget az ujjából. Először csak körbe-körbe, és a levelesnél egy négy levelű lóherét kell rajzolni, mert az hoz szerencsét. Áspis, kerekes, úti füves, leveles, bíbola, bíbola. Teachers must thoroughly know the games. If they grew up without them, they bear the traces of a sad childhood for the rest of their lives. It is imperative that they learn them later, because without the knowledge of these games, they cannot reach out to the souls of the children. Only here can they see how the world is reflected in the souls of Hungarian children. Every single little game is a drama. It starts somewhere, then something important happens. There is tension and a punchline at the end, in every game. But you also have to contribute. Start more slowly. Speed it up for the end, first use a low voice, then gradually get higher, 
then speak faster. This is how we enhance the dramatic tension and joy of these games. Csukló alatt fogjat, hogy a kezel az a legyen, hogy a végén a kukoricánál a kis fejét megütögesse. Hey, gyulla, 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 szóla, duda, 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 pest, buda, 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 kukorica, szerepcsere fordítva. Hey, gyulla, 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 szóla, duda, 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 pest, buda, 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 from Katalin Foray's book, Music in Crush. This age is a susceptible phase of music education, an important preparation for further musical development. Following Kodai's advice, the little ones should be presented with the best musical material. Folk tradition, adults playing with children, folk songs and composed songs for listening. Singing is the basis of music education, using the human voice and personal contact. She regularly visited kindergartens and crushes around the country, getting acquainted with local traditions and singing games, which she often notated. I often went to the country with colleagues to collect children's songs. It is completely different to read a song than to see it performed. The games are not played by three-year-olds, but by 12 to 13-year-old girls. The boys don't sing, they play sports games, but the 12-year-old girl sings with a beautiful posture and with traditional costume, and this cannot be reproduced in the kindergarten with our city children. The game, however, can be. They are happy, they squat at the end, and there is a climax. Nevertheless, it is wonderful to see the original version in traditional costumes and to discover that such folk games are still known and played at the end of the century. She was the editor of the first songbook for kindergartens. She spoke about it in an interview. It was in 1950 that I was asked for the first time to compile a pedagogical, methodological manual for teachers with song materials for preschoolers. Volume 1 of the Corpus Musicae Popularis Hungaricae, Children's Games, was being prepared at the same time in the Institute of Musicology, and Kodai showed it to me and suggested that I choose games from it. In another interview, she refers to Kodai's guidance like this. When I was writing my second book, he said, OK, let's see the games. Which ones are good, which are not? They shouldn't have many semitones. But I should include composed songs as well. Text and melody suitable for children, but they should be good and artistic. How can I get something like that? He then said, the 333 singing exercises. I protested, they have no text. Then Kodai told me to ask Shandor Verdish to write text for them. I thought I would faint. I was 23 and I should go to Verdish? Well, I did. He was very friendly. I went to see him for weeks and sang the exercises for him. He wanted them with solfa or la la, and it was fantastic that he could immediately feel the mood and character of these little exercises and write tasks for them. For example, <laughs> This is a nice little exercise, Shandor immediately wrote. This is art, the association of two geniuses. I was only the intermediary, but it was a great experience anyhow. 
Later on, I was asked to compile books with European children's songs, and Veres made literary translations of all of them, with the help of Istvan Chukash. He was bored of them. He said that Chukash could write the second verses. He speaks my language. During her career, she was invited to work as a reader and consultant for several publications. For example, in 1989 and 1993, she worked with the authors of the Manuals for Vocational Training Specializing in Kindergarten Methodology. It was important for her to give methodological, practical advice to teachers in her own books and articles too. As a fellow of the National Institute of Pedagogy, she was one of the authors of the National Curriculum in 1971 and its revised edition, The Education Program for Kindergartens, in 1989. These documents respected the children's right to play and prescribed the planning of occasions for playful learning. Let us quote Zoltan Kodai. At first, music should only be a game that children initiate themselves, without any encouragement. Teachers should grasp the material that children already have. They can then develop everything on this basis, more complex games and songs, and later, also some theoretical knowledge. Her children's books are still popular today in several new editions. She was a regular lecturer at the Ketchkamate Summer Schools. In 1991, she said in a lecture, Art is a special way of cognition. How feelings are aroused by colors, sounds, words, unique symbols. Teachers influence the children by their own thinking and behavior. This is a great responsibility, since children are only now beginning to form their value system. The particular fields of art education have become rather separated in kindergarten practice. We should bring them closer through their common features it is up to the teacher to help the child discover colours, tones, volume, forms and their variations, combinations. It is important to open the eyes and ears of children to everything around them, in their closest surroundings, things that can be discovered and that they can be happy about together. And then when they draw, hum, create, let them find out something they like, something new, different, a bit different from the others. Art doesn't tolerate absolute uniformity. From the 70s biennial national conferences for leaders of local kindergarten teachers' teams were led by Katalin Forai. The interweaving of games and playfulness and the transfer effects of art education on the personality were often discussed. The following thoughts were presented at one of these occasions in Sexard in 1991. Teaching and education cannot be treated as separate concepts, especially not in the kindergarten and elementary school. You cannot teach art you can only educate people. First, you have to develop the ability to perceive, to notice and to bring to others' attention what is nice or important, beautiful, interesting and worthy. In the process of art education, nothing should be forced. We should make others aware of things. Children should be free to choose. Art is subjective. From her lecture at the opening of a meeting in Sekesh Fehervar in 1993. Teaching us to have an open mind 
Seeing and hearing should begin by us learning something from the children. They are constantly discovering the world. Let us learn the joy of discovery and novelty and marvel from them. When they see joy in our eyes and hear it in our voice, then we can begin to teach them how to see, to hear and to notice. Children need an orderly world, harmony and emotional security. And within and beyond this, we should make them notice the unusual. She was always glad to participate as president of the jury in competitions for young pedagogues. Her wise advice should be kept in mind by today's pedagogues too. Kodai's notion about music education are to be put in practice by kindergarten and school teachers, by what and how they teach. Yenu Adam, an excellent pupil and co-worker of Kodai, said that teachers should be educated in music, in developmental psychology, and know what they want. At the same time, they should adapt their knowledge to their own personality and the group they work with. Az ifjúság szomjas a zenére. Nagyon szeretik, különösen amikor tinédzser és táncolni és szórakozni akar. Youths are thirsty for music. They love it, especially teenagers who want to dance and have a good time. It is natural that they want dance music too. But if they have never heard of Mozart or Beethoven or other good composers before, then afterwards, when they are 25, 30, 35 years old, they won't know which music to revert to and they live without music or they simply listen to what's on the radio or TV, but they cannot differentiate. And so music doesn't make their life beautiful, even though it could. To improve the general state, if we were to start right now with a definite plan, would take about six to eight years, even ten years. I think this plan would need to be based on well-trained teachers. If kindergarten, elementary and singing teachers could get an education that makes them happy to teach and makes the children happy to learn. If we paid more attention to the joys of music and music making, singing and playing instruments, then I think our youths would be closer to music in the 21st century. It is an unfortunate phenomenon throughout the world that young people don't want to become teachers. A certain devaluation of the teaching profession is evident. However, the former respect and esteem should be recovered. We need to show more respect for our pedagogues and make them more cultivated. Their job is wonderful, but very difficult, especially now at the end of the century, because children are exposed to many different influences outside school. And these influences, musical too, incite stronger emotions than we can give them during a few lessons. I am an optimist. I don't know why, even after 50 years of teaching. I believe that officials and training institutions are making sure that music, this important part of art education, is included in the curriculum. It involves discipline, joy and openness towards other fields of art. I very much hope that it will get its due place not only as a body of knowledge and training, but also as something beautiful, something good to pursue and teach, because it makes both children and teachers happy. Her many decades of activities were recognized by several prizes. Janos Opatsai Cere Prize, Teres Brunswick Prize, For Budapest Prize, the Middle Cross of the Order of Merit of the Hungarian Republic, 
interview in the parliament when she got the Arpad Kish Prize. International recognition is important for us, but we have to hold our stance primarily at home and strive for Hungarian music education. We can stop doing that at the end of our lives. In the archives of the Kodai Institute of the Ferenc Liszt Academy of Music, there are numerous old videos and notes. This collection, The Legacy of Katalin Foray, is readily available in this library. Here you can see memorabilia, pictures, videos of our esteemed colleague Katalin Foray. As our students are prepared for a career in early years, they become familiar with three of Kotalin Farai's messages. Constantly strive to be a better person and educator. To have a calling for the profession. That music education in early years should be a vocation rather than a profession. To become an exemplary human being. The legacy of Kotalin Farai encompasses playfulness, a love of children, and the provision of enjoyable experiences. The preservation of basic values are imperative, as is the need to adapt the method to changing times. Ha falon közteli hold lép, kicsi nénim te vigyázz rám. Falu végén van a házunk, a buszútból ki se látszik. De a cinke hal erőppen küszöbünkön vacsorázik.